What's going on YouTube? Hope you're all doing well. So if you don't know, I am currently a computer science student. I should graduate in about a year and a half. And it's that season where everyone's applying for internships. It's competitive and it's hard to get an internship sometimes. So you might have to apply to 40, 50, 60 places, which is what I've seen people talking about. It's just, it's just hard. I got really lucky. I recently just got an internship and it was the only internship that I applied for. So I wanted to make a quick video explaining what I did and why I think it worked. There were some things I think I did right that really worked to my advantage. So I didn't plan on applying for this internship until next year. There were still classes that I wanted to take that would help me a lot with this. So the company that I applied for, I don't want to say what it is yet. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say. They make a product that basically cities, um, states, governments buy it. Everybody has them. You have 100% seen these. If you live in the US and you've seen these, which I guarantee you have, this company makes pretty much all of them. And I wanted to work in this type of environment. I wanted to work for an engineering company that works on hardware and creates physical you know, products. So I didn't plan on applying until next year. So I applied at this company to work on the manufacturing floor. I thought, hey, if I just get in, that'll be a good start. I can get to know people. I also get insurance. They'll also pay for tuition, which is a nice little benefit. HR called me and I did an interview. During the interview, I told them that I'm a computer science student. I want this job because I eventually want to get a software engineering internship there. They called me back about a week later and I didn't get the job, but they were calling me to let me know that I should just apply for the internship now because they thought something in the engineering side of things would be a much better fit than working on the manufacturing floor. I went ahead, I sent in a technical resume, filled out a whole new application. About a week later, they emailed me. They said, hey, we got your resume. We want to schedule an interview with you. So I went ahead and scheduled the interview and it was with like a senior HR person. The questions they asked me were pretty typical. Why do you want this internship? Why do you want to work for this company? I gave all my answers. I explained that, hey, I want to work in this area of software engineering. You know, I didn't really want to work in like web applications or anything. I wanted to work on hardware, which again, that is what this company did. I also explained I want to work with a big team of engineers, all different kinds of people working together to build these like crazy machines. I felt like it went really well. Then at the end, they asked me if I had any questions. So I just said, hey, my goal is to work here. Um, what are the chances of getting a job here after an internship? And she actually said, like, one of the biggest goals is that an intern will convert into a full time employee, which was great because I already told them earlier that that's what I wanted. I also asked them what the competition was like, like how many people applied. And she didn't really say much. She said, you know, it's pretty competitive. We are doing a lot of interviews this week. But she did let me know that I'm actually the only person in the area that applied. Most of the interns come from out of state. So pretty much right away, I was like, okay, that's a good advantage for me because I already live in the area. Like I'm really the only one that can do that. So I just really let it be known that I wanted to work there after the internship. This type of software engineering was exactly what I wanted to do, which I think really helped me a lot. So now let's go back to when I applied. I sent in a technical resume and I think this also really helped me at least to get the interview. If you can just explain to them, you know, why you want the job and why you should get the job and you're good at it, you have a good chance. But it's that first step of getting the interview. So here we are, here is my resume. What I did is I looked at the internship posting and I just read all the, you know, the minimum requirements and then the preferred requirements. So I tuned my resume to show all the skills that I had that were specifically asked for in that posting. So you can see here, I, I know Python. The first programming class I ever took was in C++ and I've done projects in C++. Um, I have JavaScript and I just threw these in here as well because they did mention there could be some web dev to this internship. I have worked on an STM32 microcontroller, which was literally exactly what they wanted. They don't use the same hardware, but it's programming a microcontroller. Now, normally I have like Ruby and JavaScript and TypeScript up here. I got rid of all of that stuff. I got rid of SQL and, and Postgres because I wanted to focus on exactly what they were looking for. I didn't want to clutter this up with stuff that wasn't relevant. When it came to my technical projects, I have quite a few projects, but I only put four that I thought directly applied to what they were looking for. So this assembly string integer converter, it sounds very basic. It literally takes a string, converts it to a number, does some basic calculations and then converts it back. That sounds very simple. But again, this is done purely in assembly language and I did everything manually. So all the conversions were done by me. In order to get this across to them that I knew how to do this, I linked the GitHub, but more than likely an HR person is not going to take the time to like clone your repository and run stuff and then troubleshoot it when it doesn't run because more than likely it's not just going to run out of the box. So this demo link goes to a private YouTube video where I have the code up 
and I'm running this program and I'm walking them through exactly what I did. It's about a minute and a half to two minutes long. I don't go line by line, but I show them that I know how a runtime stack works. I show them that I'm using arrays like in assembly language. I show them how I'm converting everything myself without any external libraries. I also run the program so they can see it working. I think this was key just for efficiency. HR people are looking at a ton of resumes. The easier it is for them to see your work, I think the better. If I didn't do this, I doubt they were actually going to ever see it work. They're not going to try to download your stuff. The Turbo Engine, that is a 2D game engine that I've been working on. It's in C++. Now, in the video, I run the program. All it does right now is open a screen and that you can change the colors. There's no menus. It doesn't do anything yet. So if by chance they didn't somehow download this, get it working, they would try to run it and they would have no idea what's going on. So in the video, I explain, hey, I'm using Premake. This should run on any Windows PC if you did want to try to run this. And then I just explained what I did. I explained that I'm using pre-compiled headers. I explained that I'm using a DLL file, basically just showing them that I know what these things are. So I think this showed that I'm doing work outside of school to improve my skills, especially in C++. Now this calorie calculator, this is a web app. So I sent a link to the GitHub and this demo link opens up a working web page where they can just start using it right away. This one doesn't have a video, but there's very clear instructions on how to download and run this program if they wanted to. Again, I doubt they did, but I did this because there's a front end and there's a back end repository. I wanted to show them that, hey, I know SQL. I know how to make a back end. I know how to make a front end. I know how to make them work together. Now, I've done a lot of other projects. I've made mobile apps. You can see up here I have React Native. That's for making mobile apps. But I didn't put any projects on here because it, I just wouldn't apply. I don't think it would have helped me at all. So I didn't have to answer any like crazy technical questions. Now, people talk about their interviews with Amazon and Google. Basically, all the companies that everyone applies for. And they all had to do a bunch of technical questions. Now, the reason I don't think that is always the best option is literally everyone applies to those internships. Everybody. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I know why, because of course it would be amazing to get an internship at Google or Microsoft or Amazon. But when you apply for those internships, it's very hard to hone in on like one specific skill you have. You might be amazing at something. But when you send in an internship application in your resume, you're probably just putting broad stuff because you don't really know what they're looking for. You can't really emphasize how good you are at this one thing because you don't know what you're going to be working on. You're better off niching down a little bit more. I'm not saying get like a crappy internship, but I'm just saying if there's something you want to do, find an engineering company or, or company that does that specifically that that's well known, right? So it, it might still be competitive, but at least it cuts out just all the random applications. Maybe apply to companies that you do actually want to work for because when you're in the interview, you can emphasize to them like, hey, after the internship, I want to stick around and I want to work for you. Like, this is what I want to do. They probably want people to stick around. So let them know that your goal is to work there. You might not be as qualified skill wise as someone else, but they know like, hey, this person really wants to work here. This other person, yeah, maybe they're great, but they're going to come here for the summer, then they're going to leave and they're probably not going to stick around. Overall, I would say hone in on your resume, hone in on specific companies where it is so niche that most people won't apply for it unless they really want that internship. I, I think that that helps a ton. Tune your resume to focus on the exact skills that the internship you're applying for asks for and apply to internships that do things you actually want to do. In my case, if you wanted to work on like mobile apps, there's no way you're applying for the internship I applied for. Hopefully you all get the internships you want. I know it can be tough. I know people that are applying to so many internships and taking so many interviews and it's got to be absolutely exhausting. On another note, if I didn't get this internship, I was only going to apply to engineering companies that worked on, like, like I said, very specific pieces of hardware. I was not going to apply to a company that does web applications. So I hope that helps you strategize a little bit. Uh, good luck with your internship hunt and I'll see you next time.